Hello and welcome to another episode of Time About the Movies Flashback. Today we're flashing back to June 17th, 1988. And we got four movies to look at today. Uh, some notable movies here, and then one that you may not know too much about, but um, came out this weekend. So let's go ahead and start off with the biggest new release of the weekend, and that is Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Belushi in Red Heat. I'm Ivan Danko, Moscow Special Police. I'm here to track down dangerous Soviet criminal. A Chicago police officer is helping me. A Chicago cop never relinquishes his weapon. Here. Now I know why we amended vodka. Arnold Schwarzenegger, James Belushi, Red Heat. Starting to see a couple of the problems with this movie right from the get-go, but um, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger as a Soviet policeman who teams up with a Chicago police detective played by Jim Belushi. Finding themselves on the same case, they work as partners to catch a cunning and deadly Georgia, Georgian drug kingpin played by Ed O'Ross, who killed Danko's previous partner, Belushi's character. And um, that trailer alone kind of sets up two things wrong with the movie right from the get-go. One is that accent by Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, good lord. I mean... I get it, he's supposed to be from the Soviet Union, but and I know he's Austrian too, but at the same time, that was really the best accent they could go with, really, like, I don't know. But it does lead us to a couple, a couple of funny moments in there, like when he when he opens up the leg and he, and he sees the cocaine, he's just like, cocaine him, like the way he says, that, what, the way he says cocaine, and like, it's just like, it, it makes me laugh every single time, cocaine him. But um, the second problem, of course, is that you just wonder what would have happened if John Belushi didn't kill himself because probably he would have been in this role that his brother Jim Belushi is in. And um, I don't hate Jim Belushi in any way, shape, or form. I know he gets a bad rap from a lot of people, but I've liked a lot of the movies that he was been in. Like um, uh, um, K-9 was a good movie that came out after this, and then Mr. Destiny, and then he's been a couple of other things that I've kind of liked him in. But he's definitely no John Belushi, and it's a hard thing for a guy like him to step into that mantle after, you know, coming into the same cat, same area that his brother was, who was just a craftsman at what he was able to do with, with what what he was able to accomplish during this brief time on this planet, but um, but yeah, you just may really wonder what this movie would have been like if John Belushi was still alive, and this movie probably would have been much much better than it actually ends up being. Now the movie is not bad, it's just not a great movie. It's not a great buddy cop movie like you think it should be, considering the town and the concept that they have here. This is Walter Hill who directed this, who did 48 Hours, who's done a ton of great mo action movies in his career. And this movie just really feels like, I don't know, it just didn't really have that same spark and that same momentum that some of Schwarzenegger's other movies had around this time period. I mean, this was around that time when everybody was trying to copy the Lethal Weapon formula, because that worked so well the year before. And of course, everyone wanted to try to do that as well. And who, here's the guy that gave us 48 Hours, who pioneered the buddy cop movie as we know it but this just didn't really have that spark that i think it really needed to elevate itself into something really really great as it is it's a decent movie i think schwarzenegger and belushi work well off each other once you get once the movie gets going you kind of overlook schwarzenegger's failed attempt at trying to create a russian a russian accent in general but for what the movie was trying to accomplish i think it's i think it did well for the most part it just isn't a movie that's going to have the same lasting longevity as some of these other movies that had that had these that had the same kind of concept in general here, especially the ones that Walter Hill did. But um, like I said, not a bad movie per se, but just not a movie that's up to the same levels as something like A Lethal Weapon or Forty Eight Hours. But for what it is, it's perfectly fine for what it is, perfectly salvageable. But it just keeps making you thinking of what could have been if you know if Jim Belushi, if John Belushi was still with us, but at this point, but um. It is what it is, and it's fine for what it is. So, um, let's move on to the next movie. Another buddy comedy featuring some notable names to, that you may be familiar with. Dan Aykroyd and John Candy and John Hughes' The Great Outdoors. So The Great Outdoors is the story of basically two families spending a vacation at a fictional resort town in northern Wisconsin. Uh, a story we've seen pretty much done to death several times. I mean, it's kind of like the buddy cop comedy 
Uh, it's a story we've seen done various many times. John Candy's been in a couple of movies like this. So has Dan Aykroyd, really, uh, with Neighbors and Summer Rental, just to name a few. There really is nothing about this movie in particular that's really as special or as unique as some of John Hughes' other movies that he's written. And um, this is directed by Howard Deutsch, who directed Pretty in Pink, which was also written by John Hughes. And um, when it came out, it was not the big hit that it was that I think the studio wanted because they set this up to be their next big summer comedy hit. Uh, but it did eventually go on to have a cult following and eventually has now been seen now as kind of a classic movie. But... Um, I don't know. I mean, to me, uh, I don't know. Like to me, this movie really. I'm I'm conflicted about this movie because at times there are moments that are very funny in here, but there's nothing in here that's like memorably funny. You know, moments that will, you know, leave a lasting impact on you for many many years. Except for the song that's featured in here. You know, na 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 yeah, I've seen this stuff done before and done much better, but it's, again, kind of like with Red Heat, it's not a bad movie. It's far from it. It's a movie that is perfectly salvageable, perfectly fine for what it is, but... And John Candy puts his all into it, so, did, so does Dan Aykroyd, and you see Annette Bening in here in one of her early film roles, and... Um, this is actually this actually was actually sort of a spin-off to Hughes's previous film he had done. She's having a baby where you have um John Hughes's character, uh Dan Aykroyd and Chris Young basically playing these same roles when they're among the people pitching the ideas for the names of the baby son of the main characters in that movie. And um I thought that was kind of interesting because it's weird how these John Hughes movies kind of connect to one another because in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, you have Kevin Bacon in that movie, and some say that it's his character from She's Having a Baby, but if you watch that movie later on, uh, Steve Martin's wife is actually watching She's Having a Baby on TV, so how does that work out? But um, it's just one of those fascinating little things that you can take from that from these Hughes movies back then. And um, like I said, it's not a bad movie. It's just not as good as some, as some of his more memorable comedies. It's not playing Strange and Automobiles. It's not Uncle Buck. You know, those are classic movies in my opinion. But uh, for what this movie is, it's... It's fine for what it is. It's a movie we've seen done before. It's done well enough to recommend it as something that is a it's a fun summer movie in general. It's a very fun summer comedy. But if you're gonna ask me to say if it, if it's one of those movies that it's considered to be one of John Hughes's best movies in general and John Candy's best movies in general, I can't really go that far. I just don't think it's that has that same kind of level to it that to say that I should recommend it on that level. But as for what it is. It's perfectly fine for what it is. It's definitely something that could have been a whole lot better, but I don't know. To me, it's not as good as some of John Hughes' other movies, and certainly not one of John Candy's classic movies, but it's perfectly salvageable for what it is, so I recommend it on that front, I guess. So uh, with that said, let us move on to probably the best overall movie that came out this weekend, and that is Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon in Bull Durham. And Annie Savoy knows talent when she sees it. Yeah. And the only thing I'll be counting. But there's just no substitute for experience. I'm doing long, slow, deep, soft, wet kisses the last three days. Kevin Costner. Susan Sarandon. Old Durham. Available on video cassette January 26th. So Bull Durham tells the story of Kevin Costner playing Crash Davis, a veteran catcher for the AAA Richmond Braves, brought in to teach rookie pitcher Ebby Calvin Nucle Louche, played by Tim Robbins, about the game in preparation for reaching the major leagues. And you have a baseball groupie named Annie Savoy, played by Susan Sarandon, who romances Nuke but finds herself increasingly attracted to Crash. And uh, you also have uh, Robert Wool in the cast as well, pre-Arliss, pre-Batman, uh, Trey Wilson, and the clown prince of baseball, Max Patkin. This is written and directed by Ron Shelton, who would later go on to create such classic movies as White Man Can't Jump, and some underrated little gems, like Blaze is one of those ones that I really like. I do really like Hollywood Homicide, even though that one does not get the proper attention that it deserves. I thought that was a funny movie. Uh, they also did, he also did Tin Cup. Um, he's been a pretty good director overall. This is the movie that basically launched him into the stratosphere, and... It's not really much of a baseball movie, as it is a really good romantic comedy, because you really do buy into the chemistry between Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon. They're both very, very good in the movie. Tim Robbins also gives another a really solid performance in this particular film as well. I love this movie a lot. I think it's a very funny film. It's a very well-made romantic comedy. 
that doesn't go for the traditional elements of a, of a typical romantic comedy. It's not a romantic comedy where you can auto, auto, automatically tell how it's going to end. I do like the little curveballs that it literally throws at you in this particular movie. And I think it's very interesting to see a movie that's basically about a minor league baseball team. Because usually when we get these baseball movies, they're usually about major league teams in general. Or just people, for, or just different elements of different teams and different elements of Major League Baseball in general. And I think it's very interesting and refreshing to get something similar to this. And it's a movie that still very much holds up after over 30 years. It's still a very funny movie, a very clever movie, and it still shows you these great performances that were later go on to win many of them Oscars of their own. You know, Kevin Costner's got an Oscar, Tim Robbins has an Oscar, Susan Sarandon has an Oscar. I mean, very funny movie. Very, very well-made film. I can't recommend this one enough. Bull Durham, must watch. Definitely check it out. One of the best sports movies ever made. So with that said, let's move on to our last movie here, and that is Barbara Hershey in A World Apart. Diana Roth, Jody May is their young daughter, Molly. A mother's love. A family's courage. A world apart. So in this movie, it's set in Johannesburg in 1963. The film examines the abrupt ending of 13-year-old Molly's life childhood when her father, a member of the South American Communist Party, flees into exile. Uh, ostracized by her peers, Molly draws closer to her mother, played by Barbara Hershey, who is part of the campaign against apartheid. Their relationship is challenged by hardship, political intimidation, and the mother's eventual arrest. And uh, essentially the film is a tribute to Ruth first by her, her daughter and concludes in a moment of, ep of, ep of ep epitome as Molly comes to terms with her mother's activism and understands that she too must play a part in the struggle against racial injustice. And it's a movie that nobody really ever talks about, honestly. It's a film that has a good idea to it and really feels like a film that's rather timeless, especially considering the way the world is still, where we still live in a world where racial injustice is still very much, unfortunately, alive and well, which it, it, it's unfortunate because it, it feels like it's never going away as much as we want to try to do it. But try to get rid of it, but it just it doesn't feel like it's really reaching that point. But in this particular movie, um, it's done very well. Barbara Hershey gives a very good underrated performance in this. You have Jerome Crabby, who's been in a ton of movies. He's been a great character actor for a number of years. Paul Freeman is also very good in the film, as is Tim Roth in one of his early film roles. Uh, directed by Chris Menges, and I don't know if he did anything else in particular... He's done a lot of documentaries for in the in the British for British for the BBC. I think the BBC. He did Black Beauty, Bloody Kids. He also did stuff like Local Hero, which was a great underrated film. The Killing Fields, which won an Oscar for Hang Yes Nor. Uh, Roland Joffe. He worked. For, he was a cinematographer on his movies, The Mission, and he worked with Tim Roth on a move in a play called Made in Britain, which came out in 1983. So he has a lot of good names to his na good films to his name to him, and. Uh, it's a very underrated little gem. It's a movie that nobody really ever talks about. It's a film that's kind of underrated on a number of different levels. It's one you should definitely check out. It's a very good, well-made film that unfortunately still has a lot of impotence even in today's world. And um, it's still it's a really good movie. It's one I highly recommend checking out. An underrated little gem that you may have not heard of, but I'm glad I finally got a chance to see it. So uh, definitely check this one out, A World Apart. And with that said, we're going to wrap up another edition of Time About the Movie's Flashback. When we meet next time, we'll head into, uh, we'll flash back to June 10th, 1988 with uh, Bette Midler and Lily Tomlin and the comedy Big Business. We also have uh, Mark Harmon and Sue John Connery in the Presidio and the infamous Poltergeist 3. So we'll take a look at those three movies on the next episode. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the plays on the next page. Check out the previous episode. And also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off. I will see you guys next week. And until then, as always, take care.